Sometimes I would see red patches on my face and no doubt my face became more prone to acne breakout. Hello, it's Ian. If you're new to my channel, I talk about personal growth and self-investment. And today I'm going to talk about my bad experience with these DIY masks that are often touted by influencers. But before I start, make sure you press the subscribe button below and we can continue the conversation on personal growth. And also follow me across social media platforms for more fun content. Now let's go! I probably have said it before, I wasn't educated about skincare, especially facial skin. Only until about maybe less than a year ago? I know! So during my time living in New York City, in my 20s, all I thought about was saving my money as much as I could, like many people do. So I wasn't keen on investing in any skincare product. I thought it was a luxurious thing to indulge in skincare. Let alone, I didn't even know what my skin type was, which products would work for me and which wouldn't. I just, you know, wasn't educated overall. I remember there was a time I started to become, you know, conscious of my skin. And I came across these DIY mask videos on YouTube and websites about making all these facial masks using fruit or plants you can buy in the supermarket or grocery store particularly DIY aloe mask. I think it's actually still being touted these days as a miracle hydrating mask. Now, aloe vera, which you can easily buy in a supermarket, is supposed to hydrate your facial skin, help treat sunburns, acne breakout, acne scars, provide, you know, all the good vitamins, etc, etc. I mean, you can guess all the usual good benefits. My friend, let me tell you about my personal experience. Again, I'm not speaking for everyone, but from my experience, just a few years back, I recall putting it on religiously, you know, every morning and night. I actually would put it on even overnight, as some YouTubers claim we could. First of all, when I first put it on, I thought, hmm, this is interesting, it's very gooey. I would say, yeah, when I first put it on, I remember the instant cooling effect. That felt quite nice, I would say. But then the goo will eventually dry out. It doesn't matter how thick of the layer I put it on my face, it will just eventually dry out. So it then tightened my skin, tightened. I felt like my face was being pulled. But I thought, you know, well, that must be part of the effect. I would go to sleep without, you know, rinsing, rinsing it off my face. So in the morning, of course, as you can guess, my face became super tight and pulled. I would go to the bathroom and wash it off. Well, it's funny, when you put water on your face, it becomes gooey again. So I do have to say, remember every time, you know, I washed off my, washed, washed off the mask off my face, I could feel my face was definitely softened and brightened. However, my face, particularly my neck, as I would put some aloe mask on my neck as well, became very itchy and irritated. Sometimes I would see red patches on my face and no doubt my face became more prone to acne breakout. But to make things worse, I thought it was just, you know, my skin adjusting, you know, to these new masks and building tolerance. So I continue on for, I don't know, a couple of months? Couple of months! I eventually stopped for a few reasons. First of all, I didn't see a tremendous improvement on my face and my skin. Yeah, my face became smooth right after the mask and my skin was brightened right after the mask. But at the same time, my face and neck became so itchy and just irritated. Well, secondly, I, I, 
I just couldn't keep up with the constant buying the ALO and cutting it up and washing it up, washing all the tools for the mass preparation and blah blah blah. It's just a whole shenanigan I had to go through every time, you know, I just put this these kind of DIY mask on my face. It was annoying, of course. And furthermore, I didn't feel like I was saving money. Because if you break down the co the cost every time you put on such mask, it ends up costing somewhat, you know, similar to a commercial product per usage. I think I was just so desperate. At one point, I actually had cactus leaf on my face. Cactus leaf! <laughs> but that's another story. So anyway, I eventually stopped altogether. I'm not saying aloe or cactus leaf are harmful to your skin. They do have incredible ingredients. I'm not denying it, but it should be consumed in the right concentration and on a consistent level. Just putting on pure aloe does expose your skin to a very high concentration of certain ingredients that might actually do more harm than good to your delicate skin. Look, I wouldn't say all DIY masks are bad. I think honey actually does work. But hey, it's so expensive to even get honey these days. You may just get a good, easy breezy hydrating mask, a commercial one. If you want to have a good hydrating mask, I would recommend Peter Roth Norman's Alo Mask. It's about 259 Hong Kong dollars. I tried this product after watching one of Hiram's videos on YouTube. It may sound like a lot, but you can literally use this, use this product forever. It's much safer, it's more consistent in terms of concentration, and it saves a lot more time, you know, cutting up the ALO and making sure, you know, it's properly, properly stored and, you know, all this kind of stuff. So make sure you do your own research before blindly follow a random influencer or some random advice. So if you want to take care of your skin, go through the proper channel. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. Show me some love and click like if you like this video. Make sure you follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And subscribe to my channel for more fun videos. I'll see you next time.